Dr. Lori. This is What's It Worth with Dr. Lori, and I'm here with Cheryl. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good morning. Where are you from? I'm from Columbia. Ah, terrific. Little ride today. <laughs> Just a little. Not too bad. No, not at all. Right, okay. Not so at tell all. tell me what you brought. <laughs> I brought this step stool that I've had since I was uh, a child. It was, I think, given to my mom when I was born in 1953. Okay. Uh, I really know nothing more about it other than that. I've just had it all my life, and it's one of the few things I didn't get rid of when we got married and moved and everything else. What did you get rid of? So you got married uh, and you moved, leave mom's house, and what did you get rid of? Um, what do you miss? Oh. Uh, I miss everything. What? Like what? <laughs> well, we, we downsized, and so I got rid of like a lot of glassware. Yeah. You know, the carnival wear, the depression That glass. makes the house look pretty. Right, right. Okay. But I still held on to the stool. Why? Why did the stool make it, and not all the things that would be sort of decorative? Why does the stuff that's sort of emotional make it? Well, I have five granddaughters. Ah, the grandkids. There we go, the grandkids. Yes, I have okay. five granddaughters. All and granddaughters. All granddaughters. Is the eldest one going to get it? Oh, I don't know. So what are you thinking about in terms of the grandkids? Well, I don't know. My, my children didn't want any of the stuff I got rid of, so I don't know if they're going to want the old stool. Okay. But I just I just. So kids get it. first dibs. Right. Kids and here's get what happens. Dibs. Most of your kids will all say, oh, I don't want it. I don't want it. I have my own stuff. Because they have a pile of stuff from their wedding and writing from you and all of this. And then we oftentimes forget that the grandchildren really want stuff because they want to have that connection to grandma. Right? So we send, tend to see that oftentimes. We tend to see the grandkids and many, many grandmothers, I'm not a grandmother, so I don't, you know, I hear this from grandmothers like Cheryl, you know, basically they, they tend to say, oh, you know, I didn't even think of my grandkids. Once their mother said they didn't want it, I didn't think of her children. That's true. Yeah, it's That's true. true. Okay, so this particular piece you got in the early 1950s. Right. And you assume that it was a gift at that time. You don't think it's any older than the 1950s. No, no, I, I do think it's older. I think it, it might have been given by an older lady that lived in a downstairs apartment. Okay. And I know they wouldn't have bought, went out and bought something new. Okay. Okay, because my dad was in the Navy at the time, and we didn't uh, right. have a lot for them to go out and buy something new sure. like this. It was a nice gift, a nice thought for that right. person. Right. Let's talk about its age. Let's look at this object. So first of all, I want you to look at it, and I don't know if you can get it, because you're looking at these nice decorative elements. Of course, the bird and the... Um, uh, and the uh, plant life and the leaves and the rest of it. But I want you to see if you can see it. Do you see the grain of the wood underneath the black? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah, I do see it. Okay, so right. you can see it here as it's been stepped on and stepped on and stepped on, right, and touch, and it's scraped against something, and we've had some loss, and that's just age. But basically, this area right here shows you that this is really just a pine stool. Remember the grain, forget the stain. And people say, what do you mean, Lori? Well, I want you to understand that basically the grain is gonna tell you a lot about the piece, mm -hmm. even if it is underneath five layers of paint, right? So that's what you're looking at here. The other thing that's going to tell you a lot about the piece in terms of age is gonna be construction. So, for example, here you have, of course, these flathead screws, ah. okay? Mm -hmm. And there are what's keeping it together. They're not Phillips head. Right. They're flathead, right? And then, and we all know the difference between the two. We can show you the screwdrivers if you want. No, no, no. <laughs> but basically, that's what you're looking at here with a brace, right? So, so you know that you actually can put your full weight on it because you've got this particular brace, which would be called, of course, a supporter or a stretcher at the bottom of it. And it's a nice, strong piece. It's going, you're going to be able to step right on it. Now, the decorative nature of it, the black against the very multicolored bird, which is here and also here on the side, actually, of course, makes it look pretty in an area. So it could be in a laundry room. It could be in a mud room, like my mother used to call the, the little area of our house between the between the garage and sort of the first steps to go to the upstairs, the mud room, right, where you, the muddy shoes would be. It could go there and it would look nice and pretty. It could hold open a door, mm -hmm. so it could work as a doorstop. So it had a lot of different uses, but the main use, of course, is this idea of it being, of course, a step stool. Now, I think it dates to about the 1930s. So I think it's at least 20 years older than, of course, the 1950s. Mm -hmm. It is definitely early 20th century. Definitely early 1900s. Now, why? The pigment is oil paint. It's not after 1945 where we would have acrylic paint. So the type of paint, because acrylic paint is introduced after World War II. So basically what you have here is oil paint, very, very strong. And what they've done is they didn't put an under paint under it. What does that mean? They didn't put a rabbit skin glue or a gesso under it so you wouldn't have the scraping. So what you have is if it gets scraped, you're scraping off one layer of paint. 
You're not scraping off a layer of paint and then a layer of an adhesive to prepare the actual stool. So I do think that they were produced in large numbers, probably by an artisan who's making this. These pieces fall under something called American folk art. And that's a very, very hot commodity in the collectibles market. People like this particular scene. Now, here in Lancaster County, we see a lot of this. Yeah, we do, we do. But in other parts of the country, they'll pay a lot more for it than they would here. So that's what's interesting about it. If you see a lot of it in a particular area, you know, Acoma pottery in the uh, American Southwest, like Arizona, you know, you don't see that as much here, so we'll pay more for it. And it's just knowing where to market something. In terms of this particular piece, it dates from the 1930s, and it's a very nice stool, and I would say value on it about $300 in its current condition, which is fair. Yeah. When you start to say, oh, I'm gonna repaint this, you're gonna damage it. If you're not Picasso, don't repaint it, leave it alone. Okay. I want you to leave it alone. If you want to protect it, what you can do is, of course, make sure that you surface dust it, get the regular dust off of it, because dust will do some damage, dirt will do some damage. Mm -hmm. Keep it in a place where temperature and humidity does not change. I had it in the bathroom. The bathroom's not good, <laughs> Cheryl. Not good, it's the bathroom. So you don't want it in the bathroom. Although the little kids, your grandkids, yeah. probably have to brush their teeth exactly. stepped on it. Okay, right. I get that. <laughs> Unless, if you can keep it in a guest bathroom where there isn't a shower every day, oh, you know, okay. that kind of thing might be better, maybe a powder room. But if you keep it into the bathroom, you're going to have more of these issues because of temperature and humidity changing. Actually. And of course, at different times, you're going to see it's a little bit sturdier at one time because, of course, of expansion and contraction of the wood. Oh, okay. Surprised? I, I am surprised. Yeah, it's a nice piece. I almost put it up for yard sale for like five bucks. Sure. <laughs> Just give it away at the yard sale. <laughs> Why not? Right? Why yeah, not? I want you to think about that. Okay. But it's, it's really, it's a nice piece. It really is. It's okay. a nice piece. It's in good condition. And most of the elements of, of course, the decoration are really still there. But mm -hmm. remember, the grain's really important so you understand what type of wood it is. I Thanks see. so much for being with us. Thank you. Speaking of stools and tables and other furniture, did you notice that we have a new beautiful set here on what's it worth with Dr. Lori? Well, I want to mention this particular table. The table that we're appraising all of our objects on is really going to become part of the show, too. And um, every time, I'm going to give you a little tip about the table so we can learn a little bit more about this. This Egyptian-inspired table, it dates to about 1925. It is an example of Egyptomania which happened in the early 1920s, shortly after the 1922 exhuming of King Tut's tomb. In 1922, we dig up King Tut, and lots of our decorative arts and furniture in that time period, in fact, will have these Egyptian motifs. I'll tell you more about this table as we go through. Thanks very much for being with me. Thanks to Cheryl. Thank you. I'm Dr. Lori, and this is What's It Worth?